Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of How Did They Build That? This is the Glide Edition. In these videos and in this video series, in fact, we are taking a look at an existing app from the Glide template store and we'll take a look at how that app was built. We'll do that by copying that app into our Glide account and, and then see each and every page how it was built, every component that was added to the app. Um, and along the way, we'll also learn a few things about Glide and that's really what the purpose is, is to understand how to build these different apps. Um, and so that this might inspire some of you to build your own app uh, using some of the things that you learned um, by watching a few of these videos. So here's another episode of how did they build that using Glide. For today's video, I thought let's take a look at the Planner app by Joshua. Uh, this is available from the template store and I'll leave a link to this app from the template store in the description of this video if you would like to go ahead and copy this app yourself after watching this video. To copy the app, let's click on the copy app for free button. What this will do is in the background, it will copy the app and the spreadsheet to my Glide account uh, and the spreadsheet, it will store it into my Google Drive account. So I've already given that permissions and now what it is doing is it's loading up, it's opening the app. So it's loading it up uh, for me to now go ahead and edit the app. So the aim of the apps you know, all of all these apps from the from the template store is that it is ready. You're, you're pretty much copying a finished product. So you're not starting from scratch. You're starting from where people have left off and you can either use it, use it as it is for whatever purpose you're using it, or you can go ahead and build on top of that. Um, if you if you want to add or remove features, you can do that as well. So before we dive into the details of how um, of how this app was built, let's take a look at uh, how it actually functions. So given that this is a planner app, you will think that all it is doing is you have, um, you know, it's, it's your day-to-day -day planner app, right? So you have things that you want to do and that's probably what you want to add. I can see that there's categories, that means there's some sort of organization going on, um, but it should be kind of similar to what um, I think everyone's understanding of what a planner is. So let's take a look at the app itself. So you have the first tab, which is written as planner. Um, I'll just bring myself a bit here. Um, so the first one is planner, have a few reminders here and then a few categories. If I click on the categories, it looks like I'm going to another category. Um, and then just a few list items here. I can click on any one of these reminders and this goes into this one as well. Then what do I have? I have all projects and all projects is just a list of looks like just all projects. And so if I click on one of these, I can see that there's the project and under the project you have some outstanding tasks. And then you have completed tasks as well. So you can always go and have a look at those. And then finally in the third tab, you have a list of open tasks. And so each of these tasks might belong to, might belong to a project. So that's, uh, that's the sort of gist of how, you know, of how this, this app really is or of and functions. Uh, so what do you have at the, at the most basic level, you have tasks and each task can belong to a project and it looks like there's something about categories but we'll take a look at this spreadsheet but essentially each task can belong to a project and then you know you can mark tasks has done or or not done and uh, the project has you know in progress or completed as well that, at least that's what it looks like so let's take a look at the spreadsheet actually so this time instead of instead of taking a look at the app Let's take a look at the spreadsheet and see what it looks like. What is the data? So you have categories. So there was categories for sure. Okay, that's good. Um, you have personal, professional and other. And this is, you have a link here to projects. 
So this is of column type relation and what we are saying is match the value in the category column in this sheet with the category column, the values in the category column of the project sheet and we are matching it multiple. So we can bring multiple projects that match this category. So I see there's actually three layers here. So you have tasks, um, projects and then categories. Let's see what choices are. That's interesting. So that's just a list of projects under this category. Now if I click on projects, now if I click on projects, I can see that there's uh, like main projects here uh, and each of these projects may belong to a category. So some may belong to personal, some may belong to professional and some may belong to others. And each of these projects has its own its own details. You have um, you know you have description, you have due date, uh, you have some keys, which apparently is just a text, uh, and you have a status, which is uh, either in progress, completed. And now over here you have a few more things. You have category relation. So now this is building it up, right? So um, what this is saying now is look at the category column in this sheet and match it to the values in the category column in the category sheet. So it's similar to what we did in the category sheet, but this is the opposite. Now, obviously there's no, for each project, there won't be multiple categories. So you, we don't check the match multiple checkbox because this is the other way around. Having said that, there's another column called tasks. So now this is one level down. And if I edit the task, I can see that you're matching the values in the project column with the values in the project column of the task sheet. So we have, we are, we are doing something similar to what we did before. Uh, in this case, we're matching multiple because mul we can have multiple tasks in a single project. And that's pretty much it. We, we are not pulling in any other values. That's all good. Now in the list of tasks, in the list of tasks, you have task, you have project. So each task can belong to a project and that can have a due date. And then you can have, you know, the status of that, whether it's done or not. Um, now, because it's belong to, belonging to a project, we can uh, use this, we can create this column type called relation and relate each task with a project. So this will just be one project per task. Now, because we have done that, we should be able to pull in the category as well, because each project also belongs to a category. And so what we did is we are using a look up column type to look at the project relation that we just built. So we have connected the task and projects together using this project relation. And based on that, now we can bring in the uh, the category for that project. So that's some neat uh, information that we can pull. And then based on this value, now we can also create a category relation. So we are looking at category and therefore now linking each task with the category. So this is one, we are skipping one level. We are skipping projects going straight to categories. So this is how you do it. You would have to create, you have to have a link task with a project first. And based on that link, you pull in the category value. And then based on that value, you link it up with the categories table. So there's, there's two levels there. So apart from that, there's not, no, not much going on here in this sheet itself. Um, here you have, what do you have here? Here you have three different choices, which is fine. Let's see how it is used. Uh, it's definitely not used there before. So if I, um, let's go on to task and click on one of these tasks. I can see that the task status I can check, um, but probably the, the, the in progress thing is probably in, in one of these actually. There you go. That's, that's where it is used for just coming in the drop down. Cool. So now let's take a step back. And now that we have had a look at how the app 
functions and we have had a look at the spreadsheet itself the data structure now we have a lot more understanding of what's going on behind the hood under the hood and now let's take a look at each and every screen and look at the components that were used to build this app so on the first one we have planner and the first tab has in this screen it has a few elements the first one is title um, apparently there's nothing in the title so if i just say planner test where does it go oh okay so there's actually a condition here so there's options visibility show component when category is so that seems like that seems like um, an, a misconfigured misconfigured element. Maybe it is not required. I do not know. But apparently that's not used. So let's not ponder over it. We have two lists here. You have inline list which shows the categories. So you have it, the value, the, 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 the source for this data is coming from category the uh, category sheet and then we're just pulling that information here um, just configure this to be that to be uh, you know various images and all of that um, and then when you click on each and every element you can go onto the details page for this particular category now what are the options so this is uh, visibility um, there is no search there's no filter there's only sort by sheet order so this is technically not really reminders it is just randomly three categories sorted by the sheet order so depending on whatever appears there is just showing you categories and this also kind of is the same thing so it's kind of repeated so i'm not sure what the intention was here um, but it certainly looks like some repetition Perhaps there's just two ways of showing you. So technically you do not require these first two elements. You just require this inline list at the at the bottom. Uh, and you can basically show all the categories. So you can rename this to categories, for example. And if you go into the options, has expected, there's nothing here. Um, so you have just normal categories and, and we'll just leave it at that at the moment. Clicking on any one of these categories does take you to the category detail screen. So that is sort of expected. Um, and so you start off with title. Um, and what this is, is really the category image and the category names that's here. Then you have a button and the button says ahead a new project. So if you remember each category can contain multiple projects and so this is where you add a new project and this list below shows the list of projects that are already in this category so you have a few categories here few projects here and so the source for this information is coming from the projects link that we just created from the projects uh, relation that we just created and then based on that relation, we are able to pull in the project and the project description and even the image. Now we have added one condition. So you want to display the list of projects that is not completed already, right? It's not completed. If I click on one of these projects, I go onto the project detail screen. And in this section, I have uh, just displayed I have just displayed the title I've displayed the choice so I can update the choice um, and I can update the status of the based on this drop down I can update the status of this project I can mark this project as completed um, I can look at I can add more tasks to this project and I can look at the outstanding and the completed task so that just lists um, for some reason this is showing up as an error so that might need to be fixed but if I go back I can see that's that's pretty much what this page is all about right now you have open tasks so now this is being pulled from the third sheet which is the task sheet and 
if I go on to the list which is the component that's been used here I can see that the list is pulling the task information the project that this task belongs to and also the status so the status is um, because it's a checklist so we're using uh, for the style of this list we're using a checklist so we have not used this before but you know this is a this is a task so you should be able to just click on this box and it should disappear from your task right so we do want to use a checklist just in terms of the usability for this app it makes sense to use a checklist and the check value is really the status so that's a boolean whether it is completed or not yes or no true or false you know in the options we have a filter so this one is show only those tasks where the status is false or status is empty so basically the task is not done yet and sort by is really the due date so when you create a new task which you can do from the plus icon here um, you can set a due date and based on that due date you have a list of tasks that show up here and that is actually pretty much it really uh, so each task will you can see the details of each task um, and based on this relation you can really see the details of the project that this task belong to so it's all linking up from here and there right? whichever screen you go you should be able to see the other information so if you go onto the task screen you should be able to see the project that this task belongs to if you go onto the project screen you should be able to see the list of tasks that are under a particular project and if you go to the category screen you should be able to see the list of projects that belong to this category so just linking the same uh, data from different angles and that's really what this app is all about so if in terms of the complexity it's really simple um, and but if you really want to dive into uh, relation type relation column types in glide i think this is an example that uh, it would make really good sense for you to replicate try and make this on your own um, and so you have these three layers of relationships and now you want from different screens you want to show different values right so you want to link all the projects in the category screen and so on and so forth and so this is a really good exercise for you to do uh, and if you do follow along and if you do this app let me know what your thoughts are when you when you have when you've had a chance to create a glide app um, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below and i will read them and i will respond to them uh, and in general what are your thoughts about these this video series what are your thoughts about glide all of that i definitely like to that definitely like to know we have we have reached the end of this video so if you do uh, if you do like this video give it a thumbs up uh, and if you um, do want to watch more of these videos definitely subscribe to this channel so more of my videos will show up on your youtube feed um, and uh, and that's that's pretty much it for this video thank you thank you for watching and uh, see you in another video definitely stay tuned for more videos to come right see ya